Shinji and Warhammer 40k, Chapter 4, This is Tokyo 3, Part 2. Makoto Hyuga considered himself a normal person. He grew up in a normal way, tried to excel in school in a normal way, got hired into a secretive paramilitary organisation in a distressingly normal way. He looked up wanted ads and submitted his resume to a hiring agent. He had normal hobbies and normal dreams. Getting between Misato Katsuragi's legs is also a perfectly normal desire. Major Katsuragi liked to walk around in that little miniskirt, and nearly every male and not just a few female employees were easily distracted by her life figure walking by. Makoto's main difference is that his rational mind is saying, She's way out of your league, man, while his heart wants to damn the torpedoes and try to charm his superior officer anyway. It should be noted by now that the reason why Makoto, Hugo, and Maya Ibuki had imprinted on their respective superior officers and not each other was that they were simply too similar, and also why Shigeru Alba still dreams of making it big as a rock star. In the end, they all moved in fantasies and not in the daily tide of their seemingly useless lives, souls forever lost in the terrifying freedom of their existence. Until the angel attack, of course, in which case it suddenly became too exciting. A building beside the Ava were opened up to reveal a weapons cache. The Evangelion took out the assault rifle analogue and moved sideways along the row of buildings. Misato at some point convinced the others it might not be a good idea for an Ava to keep emerging in full view of the angel it's going to attack. Whose idea was it anyway to have the Ava emerge right behind Satchiel? Remember Shinji? Misato spoke over the link. Spread your AT field! Yes, Misato-san. It has an AT field. I have an AT field. Just like practice. Neutralize. Neutralize. He searched around in his mind, but other than the Ava's continuing pain and impatience, there was no one. He would, for the first time, be alone. Unit 1 stepped out of cover and burst at the angel. Shinji burned the clip through, gritting his teeth all the while. Die. 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 Here. Die. Quickly. Shinji! What are you doing? You're just clouding up the target! The pilot blinked. What? Lashes of energy emerged whip-like from the dust cloud, only narrowly avoided. The Ava's weapon broke apart in the Evangelion's hands, razor-edged energy rips slicing through the thick metal stock with contemptuous ease. Unit 1 backpedaled quickly. Masata-san! We're giving you a reserve rifle! Take it! The Unit 1 began to run and raged at itself. It longed to leap at the enemy and tear it to shreds. Those energy fielders, however, could counter that even before Evangelion could get near. This was Sham Cell, where the previous angel was a force, its odd appearance leveraged finesse. It's like purpose built to defeat us, Shinji thought. They learn. They want to kill us. Unit 1 stopped suddenly at reaching a particular building of no apparent note. It pivoted on its heel and reached out with its left hand towards the angel. Shinji extended his AT field. To someone who had made, maintained and still conversed with secondary entities in his mind, the feel of the AT field was also familiar. It was like filling a hollow. It was like reaching the top of a mountain. It was like living in light. The whip-like appendages of Shamsel passed through his invisible AT field and very nearly sliced him from shoulder to hip. The Ava leapt aside and rolled. Behind it, the building was torn apart. The angel continued to lash away at the Evangelion, slicing away entire blocks of buildings in its frenzied chase. It knows our AT field! Shinji screamed to the Evangelion. It erodes it! It gets through! This thing's made like nothing else in the world to destroy me! Fear gripped him. Anyone? Anyone! How can I possibly defeat this? Keep your head, Shinji! The rifle! The rifle! Shinji could only run on. Anyone? Help! I can't. I have no power alone. What should I do? A strange thought entered him. Is this the day? At this noon, a state of special emergency has been declared all over Kanto and Chubu districts around Tokai district. More detailed information will be reported as soon as it is received. The announcement was repeated over and over. Inside the shelter, Toji groaned. It's nothing but a blank screen again. Kensuke was fiddling around with his camera. On the small replay screen, he saw the confused shaky images of Tokyo 3's current journalistic hero and his past borderline suicidal tendencies. This bootleg video was not subject to Nerve's media blackout. My god, my god, what is that thing? Holy shit, it just took out all of Mizuhara Street. There was running. The video stopped and resumed at some point on an unknown rooftop. In the distance grappled stick-like figures. That's... what's it doing? 
It's useless! Bright flashes and the cameraman scurrying back inside. Cut to black, then switch on. Its arms are gone and it's... That's a headbutt! It headbutted it again! What the fu... Kensuke closed his eyes. He mouthed the words of the man, having the entire video already memorised in his mind. It's dead. Now we're done for, Masako. Dear, if you somehow get this, I'm sorry for being so stupid. I pray you keep little Akane safe, and that she never marries a stupid fool like me. May the gods in heaven have mercy on all our souls. Then, it's not dead. It's not dead. It's a miracle. It's... Roar, crash, boom, wham, stomp, 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 shrunk, rapoom, long silence, roar, shrunk, spow, shrunk, 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 spow, spow, splint, roar, kafom. The camera carrying man cowered under cover, exposing only his head to the action that's shattering buildings and causing sluicing shock rays through the city streets. That was a monster headbutt. Whoever's in that thing is insane. This has got to be the most insanely awesome thing I've ever seen. It's. Oh God, I'm blind! The man still had his head all covered in bandages. They said he might never recover full use of his left eyeball. It was worth it, the man said later. Kensuke sighed. It was hard to imagine their thin, somewhat shadowy classmate as the one responsible for such brutal carnage. The circumstances fit. He just desperately wanted it to be so, for Shinji seemed to be him as like him, another reject, another weak-handed, shiftless dreamer. He certainly looked it, always staring off into the distance. Like Ray. And it turns out they're both pilots. Was this some cruel joke of fate? If they could be pilots, what prevented him from becoming one? He might secretly be one savage monster inside, given the right circumstances to express it. He prodded his friend with his foot. Toji, trying to sleep there on the floor, opened one eye and looked up. I gotta talk to you, said Kensuke. Alone. Now? Yeah. Toji sighed and raised his hand. Hey, class rep. Hey. What? Hikari looks up, exacerbated, from a conversation with a few female friends. Me and Kensuke are going to the toilets, is that all right? They're already at the door. Suzuhara, why didn't you do it before you left? So troublesome. The teens did use the bathroom, though. Part of that was true. They really should have gone before they left. While facing the urinal... Kensuke said in an odd tone, Told you, we're, we're friends, right? He asked. Well, just before we die, I'd like, if we could... Toji zipped his pants up in a hurry. Um, yeah, it's okay, we're friends, maybe even close friends, but... No, just, no, I'm not into that. Kensuke turned his head with a confused look on his face. Then, stricken. Then, he began to bang his head against the bathroom wall. He zipped up his pants, then pointed at Toji without looking. It's because we're friends that I'm not revealing my previously unknown and unprecedented berserker personality and killing you. I'm ignoring that part of the conversation. He pushed away from the urinal and glared ineffectually. Did you really fi- No. No thoughts. Such thoughts will involve me putting a sniper round into your brain in the near future. My good friend, Toji. Toji scratched at the side of his chin, embarrassed. So, what did you want to talk about? I want to see it even only once before my death, said Kensuke in all seriousness. I want to behold such power and awesomeness before I die. Toji felt the ground shake. The battle above? The bespectacled teen nodded. I want to bear as witness to such the terrible glory of humanity. Kensuke, what a guy. If I miss this chance... I might not ever. He bowed. So please, help me unlock the gate. If you go out, you'll be killed. Since we're here in the shelter, I wonder if we'll survive. Since I may be killed anyway, I want to see it before then. He was disturbingly cheerful about it. Told you resisted the urge to punch him in the face. Don't be a fool. What do you think nerves for? Well, what do you think that fighting machine had nerves for? You don't seem to have much confidence in it. That robot, the transferee pilots, he didn't have to, but without him we could have all died, and you would have hit him. Kensuke paused there. If we weren't afraid, Ayanami would just beat the crap out of us. I'm not afraid of no girl, Toji huffed, shoving his hands into his jacket pockets. Told you she's a girl. She can spend all day kicking your ass and you can't do anything about it without being the bad guy. We could ask for help from class rep, I suppose, but then she'd likely just call you an idiot and join in. Told you looked like a jock, but was after all the son of nerve scientists. 
He nodded under the terrifying logic of it. So in the interest of keeping up our stereos and bruised, don't you think it's our duty to go out there and see for ourselves before judging others? Toji groaned and turned to the window slit of the bathroom. Outside, the sky was just starting to change colour. I suppose there's no other choice. You're really faithful to your desires, aren't you? <laughs> Life's too short to waste. You do know that doesn't make sense with what we're going to do, right? Toji, we must reach for our dreams. That's the essence of youth. Our blood must be hot. He lifted a fist to the air. This is the power of youth. Toji. Toji? Hey, don't leave me here. The two teens ran up the steps to the top of the hill. There they saw Unit 1 already fighting, and ineffectually, the angel. Kensuke wanted power, and here it was, all bright and terrible as the painstaking constructs of man collapsed with but a touch. The Evangelion drove its hand into a building, not even waiting for it to open, and took out an oversized rifle. It fled again and grabbed another rifle from another cache, this one having opened just in time. Unit 1 surrendered even more space, then turned suddenly to burst at it with dual-wielded guns. The shots merely sparked off direct hits to the Red Angel core. The angel lashed out and tore a chunk of Unit 1's arm armour off as it tried to defend itself. Purplish blood stained nearby whitewashed buildings. It's no good, Shinji screamed at the control centre. These guns are useless. We both have our AT fields down, whether it's just armour too well or it's healing too fast for me to tell. I need something bigger. Misato turned to Ritsuko. We have a missile launcher, don't we? It's at location 46B4, Mikelto helpfully put in. But we only have two shots. Then we must make them count. It's not like we have a giant cannon the size of a mountain down here in Geofront that could help. No AT fields? And still this? How is that possible, Ritsuko? I don't know. As Shinji has said, either its armor is just that good, or its ability to heal far surpasses that of an Ava, or a second layer of an AT field. We just don't know. He had to fight three battles at once. First and most immediate was, of course, the angel. The second was the raging urge to panic, to run away and hide, curled over somewhere. The third was to suppress the tactically deficient bloodlust of the Evangelion, so eager to just charge in and claw, kill, devour the enemy. The Evangelion began to resort to leaping upon the tops of buildings to get away, like a Spider-Man, and unfortunately leaving an even greater trail of destruction at its wake. I can't do this. Being such a coward. Where are you? Shinji's words were barely picked up at the control centre. Father! Her heart went out to him. Oh, Shinji-kun, cooed both Misato and Maya. We must be the monsters to force him into doing this. Actually, Shinji's thoughts were more like, I can't do this, not with such limited equipment, to sacrifice the safety of the human race just to advance your own agenda. How could that be? What being would do that then? Such a coward. Right now, when we're fighting for our lives and those we care for. Where are you? Father, how dare you do this? Stop disappointing me! What? What's he doing? Toji watched as Unit 1 slammed face first into another building as the angel cut down the skyscraper it was trying to jump off out from under the Ava's feet. He's already beaten. He's no good. The angel stabbed with a glowing feeler at the back of the Evangelion's shoulder. It roared as the tentacle pushed through to the other side. Unit 1 actually dove right through the building and made its escape out the other side of the rubble. Kensuke winced. I wonder if getting hit's actually as bad as I think it is. He looked to Toji. It's destroy some of the city or die. Shut up, said the other teen. He was staring out, his teeth bared and gnashing with tension. Fight, he shouted silently. Fight. Why don't you fight? Beat this one like you did the other before. It reached a clearing, and out from a marked area on the ground, another building shot up suddenly. Its shell collapsed to reveal a vastly oversized Evangelion reached for it in a home run-like slide, grabbing it off its pylons just moments before the feelers could have torn it to shreds. Its power line was ripped from its back in its desperate tumble, and the timer started. Five minutes. Shinji licked his lips. The Evangelion rolled to a stop, protecting the Ava bazooka in its arms like it would a baby. Then it lifted its head and roared off a challenge to the angel. It barely avoided several more whips, and it let the angel come. 
It ducked once more under a series of attacks and moved as well. It shoved the bazooka right at the angel's face, roared and pulled the trigger. Buildings around the two were starting to crack from the force of two meshing IT fields. Explosion! The dust cloud covered everything. Denny Evangelion was seen stumbling out of the cloud, followed by glowing feelers that wrapped around its fleeing ankles. The Ava was yanked right off its feet and was swung around and around and into buildings. Two more round passes and it was sent flying into the sky. The two teens up on the hill watched its descent. It's coming right at us! yelled Kensuke, and the two ran for it. The Evangelion slammed into the hill with such force it knocked off trees out of their roots at the other side. Its arms slapped hard right where the two were about to run. Had they been a bit faster, there would be smears of blood on the ground. Shinji was breathing heavily, only the hyperoxygenated state of the LCL keeping him conscious despite the massive trauma of the impact. Nothing. No space marine. Why? The Ava's rage. He could feel it directed solely at him. The sheer frustration there. I'm sorry, machine spirit. I'm not as strong as you. Shinji, are you all right? Shinji! (sighs) I'm fine, Misasa-san. Damage levels, it's going back. It can still fight, Makoto said. He followed his brows at the screen. Shinji, do you know the Evangelion is trying to heal its wounds as fast as it's being inflicted? This mechanical monster of ours, it's not satisfied with this. I'm not satisfied with this. Evangelion Unit 1 opened his eyes. It saw the angel still at the distance, watching it. The Ava dug its head out of the soil and looked around. Shinji saw his classmates looking back up up at him with clear fear. Uh, Aren't those Shinji's classmates? said Masato, back at nerve. A smaller window pulled up the names of the two boys. Why are they there? The angel flew at the Evangelion. Again, the Ava put out both hands as if in surrender. Yes, the feelers were actually slowing, but still, so fast. Unit 1 grabbed at one feeler, letting the other whip it in its abdomen, cracking the armour there. Its hand began to smoke. Toji stood up. Why isn't he fighting? Because we're here. Kensuke remained there, his hands over his head. He can't move as he likes. Maya watched the battle from a battery of monitors. The angel continued to attack the Evangelion, which remained there unmoving. It withstood the whips like punishment from a master, chained by its need to protect the ha- hapless citizens. Unit 1! She screamed out frantically. Shinji-kun, you're living up to my expectations of you. Active time remaining is 3 minutes and 28 seconds! Misato stepped up and shouted at his suffering face on the screen. Shinji-kun! Let them into the cockpit. After they're picked up, retreat for the present and come back later. Ritsuko frowned at her. Why do you think it's possible civilians can be taken in the entry plug without permission? Masato looked back. Her expression said, Because I permit it. You are exceeding your authority, Captain Kataragi. Unit 1, active time remaining is three minutes. Maya's voice brought in the urgency. Shinji, hold the over for just a little longer. Misato looked aside, fire in her eyes. Eject the entry plug! Hurry! The two teens watched the Evangelion shudder under the continued attack. Then its back opened up. A white tube emerged and opened up dripping orange liquid. The Ava leaned back to touch it to the ground. Within, they saw Shinji vomiting and sneezing out the orange liquid. Misato's voice came from the external speakers. You two! Get in! At the boy's hesitation. Do it now! Don't let Shinji take any more for your sake! They hurriedly went in and grimaced at seeing it was full of something like water. Kensuke bewailed his camera. The entry plug slid back in and shut, darkness then through the rapid patterns resolving into an outside view. There's trouble in the nervous system, Maya noticed. Ritsuko responded idly. It's because foreign bodies have been inserted. Noises are detected in the nervous pulses. Now, Shinji, retreat! Yes, Misato-san. The angel cared little for its main objective. Destroying Unit 1 was essential. It was humanity's only defender, an abomination of the highest order. Misato relayed the exit route. Back into the city? Do it, Shinji! There's another power line in the geofront. We'll try fighting it down there, where you won't lose power so easily. We purposely put in many recharge spots. But people are hiding under the geofront, aren't they? That's why the buildings were tracked down. No way. Misato-san, I can see it. You plan on collapsing the roof of the geofront on it if, when I fail, 
don't you? I didn't think you could be so cold-blooded. All those people. You are a soldier, Masato-san. A slot on Unit 1's shoulder fin opened up. Progressive knife for crypt! Makoto yelled out. <laughs> Darkness. A door swung open and light flooded into part of a room. It was enough to reveal the particularly cheeky logo of nerve splashed onto the wall. Shinji was sitting there on the bench, doubling as a bunk. Misato stood by the door. Do you know why you're in here? She asked him. My father wanted me here. You disobeyed my orders, Shinji. You put nerve and the city and the entire world at risk. Why did you do that? Seemed the right thing to do at the time. And now? You were right, Misato-san. I should have trusted you. I thought wrongly of you. I'm sorry. Are you really? Do you understand? As a person directly responsible for your operations, you must obey me. Misato-san. Such like a soldier. Shinji looked up at the completely dark ceiling. I won't let you throw your life away like that, she added. If you go out there going along with what people say and thinking you don't matter, you're just going to get killed. You need to live. Your life doesn't belong to you now. Misato-san. Yes? Do you know the story of the three bears? The nerve officer changed her stance to rest on her other foot. She still had her arms crossed over her chest and looking disapproving. With Goldilocks? This isn't that story. May I tell you this story, Misato-san? The woman sighed and walked over. She sat beside him and put her hands on her laps. Sure, Shinji. Once upon a time, there was a big bear and a little bear. The big bear was the older brother of the little bear, the girl bear. The mother bear had died the winter before, and the big bear had to care for his sister bear, even if he had no idea how to. He caught fish for her. He played for her. He drove off anything that scared her. The big bear didn't know how to live, except through the joy of his sister bear. One day, while walking through a valley, a boulder fell tumbling down from the cliffs to crush the sister bear. She gave out such a scream and stopped moving. The big bear pushed at her with her nose, and she didn't move. He roared, he mumbled, he whined. She didn't hear him. She didn't move. He looked up and saw up on the cliff another bear, staring down at him. There was another boulder beside that bear, ready to be pushed off. Filled with rage, the big bear began to climb the sheer cliff, digging into it with his claws. He didn't care that after a while his paws were bleeding and his claws were cracked raw. He reached the top after a while, tired, but so angry and so ready to fight to the death. What did he see there? An old bear lying down, himself also bloody and weary. Near him, closer on to the cliff higher on, were seven other boulders. He had shielded it from falling further down with his own body when he saw the two younger bears walking below. He was wheezing and dying, and such sadness in his eyes. He begged the big bear to kill him. He was so sorry that he failed after all. Do you know what the big bear said, Misato-san? No, Shinji. What did the big bear say? If we had stood together, we could have stopped all the boulders, Shinji finished softly. And so while the old bear died, he asked the big bear to find other bears, so that if ever they had to save others from rocks, they would all stand together, and no one who mattered to them would be hurt by their failure. So who are you, Shinji? Are you the old bear, the big bear? Of course not, Masato-san. I can't do this alone. I've never fought alone. All this time, Ray would have gone out to die for me. You wanted me to live. The others. Without them, I can't fight at all. I've been selfish. It's not just my fight. It's all of humanity's. Is that why you fight? For humanity? Yes. Don't lie to me, Shinji. The young teen laughed, but bitterly. Till this time, I didn't really realise what humanity was. I fought because it made me feel good to be needed. No one should have to suffer any more, and it only gave them more reasons to instead. Shinji. Misato placed a hand on the young teen's shoulder. Humanity is in here, Misato san. It's our hope. It's the others who are ready to fight alongside me. In the end, I'm nothing more but the expression of their trust in the future. He looked up at her. Until today, humanity didn't really have a face. Now it wears yours. 
and Reyes and Rich Kosenseis and Maya San and Toji and Kensuke, others too. I'm sorry, Miss Ato San, I'm sorry. I won't disobey you again. I don't. I don't want you to die. I don't want any more to die. Suffering is bad enough, but that day he saw just how fragile the human existence was. She hugged him. Chin Chan, she said to the top of his head. I don't want you to die either. If all us bears stand together, maybe none of us will be crushed under the weight of our duties. Thank you, Miss Ato San. I'd let you out here if I could, but Gendel really seems to think you're a flight risk. You did say you hated the Ava, and that chant you did, that really creeped us out. I'm sorry. She let him go, away from the lock of her breasts. Well, don't take it too hard. None of us blame you for anything. You're a hero, Shin-chan. I'll try and get you out of this place as soon as possible. It's just politics. The politicians can't just let you... Let by that you destroyed so much of the city. I bet the people would boo them out of office if they learned they have you locked up after saving what's left of the city. Shinji actually smiled a bit. Not to worry, Miss Atosan. It might actually be relaxing. I need to stop and think a bit. Are you sure you're all right, Shinji? Yes, Miss Atosan. Thank you. And when she was gone, the door clicked shut and locked, and all was darkness. Shinji lay down on his bunk and closed his eyes. Softly he whispered, Scenario. Gendo saying I was wrong in full hearing of most of Nerve. Time frame? He felt a different female voice at the edge of his mind. Six to seven weeks. Excellent. You don't have to do this, you know, Toji said to Shinji as they approached the hospital. After what happened, I don't blame you for anything anymore. I have to, was his reply. Your sister is injured. That's inescapable. No, really, you don't, the taller teen began to wave his arms about. You don't have to. You shouldn't. Shinji was resolute. No more suffering. Toji's sister was named Marie, a primary school student. She squealed and giggled when Toji introduced Shinji to her. She stared up at her brother with filial awe. Then Shinji knelt before her. He pressed his forehead to the floor and asked for her forgiveness, unworthy as he was for her injuries. She stared up at her brother with female rage. Toji no baka! You are an evil, evil person, Toji mouthed to Shinji. She yelled at him for almost five minutes straight. Kensuke actually timed it on his watch. He, he supposed she took fast, shallow breaths between every other syllable, or that girl was actually 60% lung. Shinji could only smile numbly and nod on occasion. And that's why my brother is so stupid. You're my hero and I don't blame you at all. She stopped and for the first time took a deep breath. She smiled up at him with all the cuteness she could muster. She lifted up her arms. Shinji looked first to Toji, who nodded, and let her hug him. My name's Marie and some days I'm going to marry you. She exclaimed in the hug. She didn't let go. Shinji gave Toji a look that clearly said, She's your sister. Help me. He gave a look back that clearly said, Screw you. You're the crazy one, not me. Toji's parents were such that if they weren't wearing white lab coats, one could have mistaken them for soldiers or basketball players or something. They had their heads shaved in a crew cut for the younger and utterly shiny bald for the elder. Shinji started to make his bow, but was prevented from completing it. It's not your fault said Toji's father. It was the angel that destroyed the house right at the beginning of the attack. We were at nerve. Rolfing police put Toji in the shelter and Marie was stuck at the hospital for leukemia. None of that was your fault. So really it is we who must apologise, said the elder Suzuhara. Sorry for my grandchild causing you so much trouble. He dropped his brows slightly and Toji began bowing and apologising profusely. Shinji laughed weakly and said it was no matter. He began to laugh strongly when he learned about what the other Suzuharas did for a living. Dr. Suzuhara the Younger began to frown at thinking Shinji was mocking them, but his father shook his head. No. The pilot pointed at Toji. You? Then he pointed at Kensuke. You? He laughed some more. <laughs> now I finally understand why you're friends. Toji smirked. Yeah, pissed off Suki here mightily when he learned I didn't care at all about guns. I guess I could just grew used to tolerating him. 
Hey, I'll have you know I have other interests other than guns. Must I speak to them about your worship of my awesomely complete collection of pre-impact hen- Told you began to strangle him. The elder Suzuharas laughed too. That was our impression as well, though the boys do seem to get along well. Then they noticed the calculating look on Shinji's face. Yes? Is there something you wanted? You designed the weapons of the Evangelion, correct? Yes, that's right. Sorry, but the Evangelion's weapons have been almost useless. The only thing that works is the prog knife, and the angel attack was designed to keep me at a distance. I barely got in close enough to use it. Both Suzuharas bowed. We apologise. In our defence, we really have no idea what the angel's capabilities may be. You were shooting off tank rounds in burst mode. We thought that would be enough for anything, really. I wonder if you could design a specific weapon for me. Suzuhara the Younger nodded. Anything, Mr. Ikari. As Shinji described what he wanted, the elder Suzuhara's expression grew more and more excited. This, he said at last. I know this. I've seen something like it before. He ran to the other room and began yelling at the people there. There was so much noise and he ran back in with a sheet of paper. This is one of the rejected ideas for an oversized custom bullet. See, there's the solid penetrator at the tip and behind it the explosive filling. It was rejected because, well, who would be crazy enough to design a single shell that was both armor-piercing and high explosive? I call it a bolt round. Awesome, said the younger Suzuhara. If it doesn't penetrate, it will send shrapnel all over. Dangerous, true, but might take out some of the softer parts of an angel, like its eyes and the back of its joints. If it gets in, we'll rip it apart from the inside. He looked up and took off his sunglasses. He cleaned it on the edge of his coat. Now we just need a delivery system. A gun. I I might actually have a wooden model that might help. It's functional, so the shell won't actually explode. I can show you what a bolt is supposed to look like soon. He had a hell of a time rigging up that many springs and string. The Suzuharas stared at him. What? I was bored and itchy after three days in solitary confinement. Build some trucks or make some ducker, the war boss murmured. Anything less is just mucking about. Sorry about that, Toji said after a while. Hmm? Shinji turned aside while walking. What? The taller boy gestured weakly. That thing with my sister... We know you like Ayanami. Sorry if that embarrassed you. Shinji stopped. I don't like Ayanami. No way. Don't you dare, man. Kensuke jabbed a finger at Shinji's nose. We were there. She was like, hurt him and I'll kick your ass. And you were like, make fun of her and I'll smash you flat. We're not stupid. If that doesn't make you a couple, I don't know what will. Unless you're going to say you actually hate her. Toji added with a deeply sarcastic leer. Shinji frowned. You're mistaken. Look, I'll admit I piloted the Evangelion for Ayanami's sake. Ha! Kensuke crawled. But you were there. You know what's like... Ray. Something about her feels familiar to me. It's not love. It's not family. But I have to protect her. I feel her future is dark and I feel like... Standing in front of it and holding it back with my hands and saying, You won't have her! I feel like holding her to me and protecting her from the evils of humanity and the world. Shinji kept walking. He stopped again and turned to them. I don't understand it, really. It's like there's something deep and old and powerful inside her. I've got something deep and old and powerful in myself. And they're calling out to each other. And together they have the power to shape something new and powerful and endless in its scope. What is that? That can't be love. Kensuke nodded. Shinji, I think you pretty much just defined lust. Ugh! Pilot pulled at his hair. It's not it. I can't, I can't explain it. Ray's just connected to me somehow. I don't actually get a stiffy from looking at her. She has bled, and her body, her blood, and her pain, I shall write a new covenant. She's fought with me, my sister of battle, and upon her sacrifice, I will likewise give my all to see to it she doesn't suffer any more. She rears the face of humanity itself to me. Shinji turned to the two. Likewise, you two have fought with me, my battle brothers, and to you I give the same respect. I'll fight to protect you the same as I would to protect Rei. Toji and Kensuke merely stood there, silent. Though sometimes I do have this strange urge to lick all over a body. Does that make sense?
Toji opened his mouth to say something. He closed it. He put his finger up to make a point and opened his mouth to speak. Then he shut it again. The most he could get out was... You... But... But... Kensuke sniffed and went over to slap Shinji's back. You know, I think this might be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. His glasses reflected the sunlight oddly. Shinji, if you're not going to use up all your fangirls, could you throw a few our way? Um, sure. What are you talking about? Well then, Toji took a deep breath and thumped his chest. I can see where this is going. We've got to protect Shinji from all the other vultures in our school. Ray too. We're in this together. We're a company of heroes, a company of men, a knight and his guards. He grinned at Shinji. Don't worry, Shinji. We're going to be your guardsmen. I keep them back and Suki here can flail at them uselessly from the sidelines. Hey! Shinji smiled, his eyes suddenly sad. Actually, I might have another use for Kensuke. You know stuff, right, Kensuke? The glasses wearing boy smirked. Yes, Shinji, you could say I know stuff. Then could you find something out for me? I think you're the only one who can help me about this. It's about a game, a pre-impact game. It was made in the UK, I think. Stand by my side, Battle Brothers. Shinji! Misato yelled. What are you doing? Sorry, Misato-san, but this thing, it's fast. It's going to keep on following and following me until only one of us survives. It's going to follow me right down the very chute I enter. I need to end this now. Transferry! Told you went over behind the cockpit seat. She says run away, Transferry! No, Shinji said, snarling. No more suffering, no more suffering. Damn it, Akari, you're not the only life at risk here. Exactly, Shinji said aside. Fight for your sister, Suzuhara. Fight for her like you've never fought before. That struck the jock numb. Shinji seemed so small there in the seat, yet at the same time, you're the one at the controls. What can I do? The Evangelion growled and rolled aside as the angel drove its body into the side of the hill. It had more mass. No way, muttered Kensuke. And he's just trying to headbutt you? That is the enemy of humanity. Believe it will fall and it will. Both other boys looked at the angel, standing there, its deadly feelers wiggling. They felt the hate, the urge to destroy. That thing wants to kill my sister, said Toji. That thing wants to make useless all the wondrous things humanity has made, added Kensuke. The angel surged forward, the Evangelion led with its knee. The angel didn't actually have any groin for him to kick. It pushed the angel back with its own weight and slid away from what would have been a deadly embrace. Believe it will and it shall! We fight! screamed Shinji. I can't fight it alone. We must fight! The enemies of humanity will die! It will fall! shouted Kensuke. It will die! yelled Toji. The Evangelion roared. Its AT field broke the air around it, expanding suddenly. A sonic boom spread over the surrounding area. Bleed and die! yelled three youthful burning voices in the entry plug. One must remember, all in Shinji's class were potential pilot candidates. The angel actually stood still for a moment, confused as the AT field shifted. The Evangelion headbutted it back down the hill. It tumbled over, its feelers leaving long scorched lines in the grass. No way. They can't be, said Makoto over at the console. He put his palms together as if in prayer. Please, Shinji-kun, kill! Shamsul shot out with feelers. The Evangelion punched out at it, using its AT field offensively. A pressure ray pushed it back, even if its feelers were unaffected. The lethal whips fell short of the mark. Crush! Makoto prayed without knowing why. It wasn't enough just to win, but to break the enemy. To make it regret trying to stamp down on mankind's feeble mortal hopes. The Evangelion landed on the angel with both feet. It gave out a tormented screech as half of it caved inwards. It lashed out at the Ava, and Unit 1 caught one of the feelers on its palm, its bare smoking palm. The other pierced its abdomen armour. Burn! My hand is burning! Kensuke cried out suddenly. Its shine is calling out for me to defeat you! 
the Evangelion pulled and ripped that feeler right out of Shamsil's strange growths. In its hands, the crackling particle whips became nothing more than rope-like twists of biological material. Strangely enough, the Ava's hands did glow, and as it grabbed, both signs of the age where it grasped, there rose acrid smoke. MAIM! Can it be done? Kill. Yes, kill! The Evangelion roared and spat at its face. The angel screeched again as it felt its eye melting, that spit reacting much like its feelers had. Corrosive AT field wrapped around conductive matter. KILL! The angel blew aside the Evangelion in a burst of its normal AT field and began to float away. Unit 1 grabbed at the single remaining feeler and yanked it back. Three voices screamed as the bulk of the angel shot back and met with a left-handed stab of the progressive knife at the core. They yelled some more. Sparks began to fly as red solid object met red glowing object. Then, silence. It was sunset. It was night. Shinji looked out at the stars. He picked up his pen, opened up his notebook and began to write. Toji Suzuhara. Related to Evangelion weapons designers. Simple, loyal, dedicated. If he follows orders well, maybe the core around which I can build my above ground more activist plans on. I can. Shinji put his pen down and looked at what he'd just written. Toji was a good person. He looked out the window. Tokyo 3 was full of good people. It was they that made the city. Buildings can be rebuilt. Tokyo 3 was a good city. He looked again at the list he'd made and snarled. He ripped the page right off and crumbled it. I won't be my father, he said softly. I'll beat him my own way. He closed his eyes and sighed, let his mind one clear and free. In this relaxive meditative state, he didn't notice he was unconsciously flipping over the notebook and opening it up. In one of the back pages where he wouldn't look, he wrote, Tokyo free. All of it, mine. He yawned and put away the notebook. He went to sleep. Fuss ended the second day against the angels.